Hello everyone, this is Shadi Reis from NCBH 2023. I'm really privileged today to be with Dr. Lake Raja uh, to talk about techniques for CTO or chronic total occlusion. Dr. Raja, thanks for being with us. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. So, you know, the, the CTO is a very challenging disease and uh, certain operators are more comfortable with it, but you've been there doing it for a while. So walk us through the algorithm that you have and your techniques. Sure. So first of all, uh, <clears throat> talking about chronic total occlusions, uh, if you look at the patients who have significant peripheral arterial disease, about 50% of them, they have chronic total occlusions. Mm -hmm. Now if you go into uh, advanced disease like uh, chronic limb threatening ischemia, uh, wounds and all, it's much higher. Mm -hmm. In addition to having CTOs, they have multi-level CTOs, meaning there are two or three of them. And of course, treating those patients, if you are unable to cross them, you can treat them, right? And there are times when uh, you are the only person, the last person. Last before, chance for them. Last chance for them, and before they have a major amputation. amputation. So that's the reason uh, uh, I got very much um, involved and in learning how to do this, uh, uh, cross these occlusions, right? So if you look at this uh, chronic total occlusion, normally uh, you just uh, go anti-grade and try to cross, but as the lesion gets longer and, uh, and chronic, there are many chances that you may not get through to it. Correct. So recently, Dr. Jihad Mustafa and Fari uh, 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 published a paper, CTOP, trying to show there are different kinds of caps distal cap and proximal cap, which are more possible to go anti-grade and which probably you're gonna end up using retrograde. And out of five scenarios, four of them ended up using retrograde access. Oh. So meaning that at least more than half of the cases, you will end up utilizing another access to cross those CTOs. That's, that's pretty high. Yeah, so what I do, is not only me, I train physicians to become comfortable in getting alternate access. What does alternate access mean? It could be uh, pedal access, access right at the foot area. Uh, it could be anterior tibial, posterior tibial, peroneal arteries. It could be, there are like 10 different uh, alternate accesses. So yesterday, uh, I did talk about some basic concepts of um, how to get uh, retrograde anterior tibial artery under ultrasound, which is uh, very helpful because if there are no radiation and uh, while doing under ultrasound, you can actually, you can see your wire getting into the vessel and if there is something, you're hitting a plaque, you can troubleshoot, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then there are certain uh, other access you have to do under fluoroscopy. So I showed some examples like uh, peroneal artery access or high ET access or uh, uh, distal SFA access. I feel like sometimes uh, some of the physicians may are they're a little bit concerned about doing this. They may hurt the artery. They may damage and may, things may become worse. Probably that kind of makes them think twice before they attempt it, attempt it yeah. right? So there's a good data available. Dr. J Craig Walker, Dr. Jihad Mustafa, they have presented a bunch of data, and if you look at that, the complication rate is very low. Yeah. Not only that, if you look at the, act, the success of crossing this lesion, certainly goes very high. Right? By, by learning these alternative exactly, access. Exactly, exactly. So if I want to be a CLI fighter, meaning that I want to run, which I'm running, a CLI program, yeah, I get many patients who are being attempted by other physicians and been failed, right? So I'm the last guy they come to, right? So to have a very successful CLI program, you have to learn all. Right. And the, how is the learning uh, curve for alternative access? This cell or... Um, well, first thing is you got to get comfortable with ultrasound. 
mm. right? Uh, because uh, uh, you, when I started years ago, I used to ask ultrasound tech to come. And she used to show me and, and used to get an access. And then of course, you know, you can have ultrasound tech all the time, right? So I started with the bigger arteries, like common femoral artery, which is pretty big, right? So I started using micropuncture, a very small wire, small catheter, and sticking the common femoral, which is like easy. So when I became very comfortable, I went down to the foot mm -hmm. and started doing, and believe me, it's been years. I haven't felt a pulse. So all Our image side, guided? All, everything is image guided, because you know, a patient is big, obese, scarring, you may not even feel a pulse. It doesn't yeah. mean that it doesn't have an artery. That's true. So I say that why do you do, want to do things blindly when you have an eye, you can see, yes. right? Yeah. So the ultrasound has really changed the way we do, and it's very safe, yeah. right? So you can find a spot which you think is a healthier, <clears throat> and where if you access, uh, the complication will be less. So you can find anywhere in your artery where you think it's the best access. So this is what my talk was about, and I think uh, physicians, um, first of all, we know that there's a uh, critical ischemia is a very deadly disease. Uh, mortality, people who have amputations, is very high, right? So how do we uh, control, how we tackle this deadly disease is somehow treating them correctly, right? And so by doing this, you are giving yeah, them options. Yeah, going advanced. Yeah. We need to start learning all the different techniques yeah. available to successfully treat these patients. Yeah. Now, Dr. Raju, as you mentioned earlier, it is a, you proctor and you teach. So maybe going to a course where you some you can show a few cases for physicians to, how to do it yes. will be a, a good jump start rather than starting yourself exactly. as an operator. So I'm glad you ask that. I do training courses uh, for almost all the companies and my objective is how I train um, physicians. I've trained more than 400 wow. doctors in this, in this country. In addition to that, I do live streaming. So from my lab, we have cameras and we do live streaming to all over the country or wherever, right? So we want to provide our physicians and all colleagues all the avenues available. Right. If they are, have a time to come, Perfect. while they are welcome to come, to I can them. teach them not only how to get an access, how to cross a CTO, different techniques. They spend two days with me and that's the beginning of our relationship and then they go back and then when they have a case, they send me images, text me, and we talk about it. And, and what the, equipment they need. Yeah, and, and then the first strategy. pedal access, they send me pictures. And you know, it's like a great thing. It is. That you, you <laughs> say, I did it. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, Dr. Raja, for all you have done and your experience for sure, and uh, your passion for CLI fighting and uh, for your mentorship. Uh, thank you uh, for our uh, people watching us. Please watch these videos and others on NCDH YouTube channel. This is Shadi Reyes from New Orleans. Dr. Raja, thanks again for thank your time. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Awesome.